Hello everybody, Patrick Nichols here with Patrick Glenn Nichols Muscle Car Barn Finds and I'm out here in a real rural area of Middle Tennessee and I've stumbled upon a really nice desert sand 1970 Chevelle SS. I'd like to do a really quick or thorough walk around video of this car. This car has been owned by this person since 1984 and this car actually runs and is driven from time to time but this is the home of where it sits and where it is located in this semi barn lean-to type of a structure this car was built at the Atlanta Georgia assembly plant in code 63 desert sand um, about January of 1970 it's an early car I think the fourth week we will go over that the cow tag as well I also once I located this car the individual was not aware that a build sheet was more than likely behind his original door panel and I located a beautiful mint original build sheet to this car just minutes ago for the owner. So we'll do a quick walk around video of it, lift the hood, the trunk, and the interior, and I will show you this car. Quick view of the front shows all four of the T3 headlights and those of you that not aware we've been through see you can see in it t3 and you see the lines in that diamond that shows the later version so the earlier version that would be smooth with the t3 all four still remain on the car car did come with cal induction black stripes bench seat saddle interior U14 tack and gauges, all five wheels are still with the car. And you can see it has radial tires because it is driven from time to time. Do a quick glance of the body at this point. It's original paint wheel with a push on caps. These were push on on some of the early cars and not bolt on. There's two different versions of the center cab. These are the push on. Example. A little bit of rust at the bottom of the fenders, which is very minor. The doors seem to be pretty much mint condition. I do believe this car has been spot painted on before, but I don't think it's been in any accidents. It did have a black vinyl top, and I can show you the remnants of where the vinyl top was just ripped away from the molding. You can see the antique tag where this car is driven. Really nice 70 Chevelle running barn find. Open the door. You can see the door panel is on the seat. I just removed that for this person. He's very happy to find out that he had a mint build sheet with this car. And you can see the, the correct 5500 red line tachometer for the L34, 396, 350 horsepower. This car came with AM, A-track stereo, which means it had dual dash speakers. So that tells you the center speaker dash pad has been changed. It did not come with a center speaker if it had eight track stereo and it had two rear speakers as well you can see the back seat and the bench seat has been recovered or changed from another car my guess is it has been recovered it has a day two her shifter the muncie shifter is long gone which is very common with these cars and you can see the water protection still from the factory behind the door panel still in place here's the original gm manufactured a 70 decal and shows 0170 which is january 1970. now let's lift the hood and address some features under the hood
okay correct early style hood still in t place with the car the car did not come with power steering so that's an add-on power steering which it has the incorrect bracket and you can see the three grooves in the crank pulley this car would have only had a single groove pulley it did not have power steering or air conditioning so that pulley has been changed also you see it has a clutch fan this car come with L34 without air conditioning, just had a fixed four blade fan. But the fan shroud is still correct to this car and the radiator has been changed. See the correct provisions for the hood pins, which was standard equipment with a cowl induction hood. And real quick, I'd like to clear up some, there's some controversy a lot of times on the internet and a lot of incorrect terminology. There is no such thing as a cowl induction delete or a stripe delete or a non-functional hood. You either had the standard SS domed hood or you had a cowl induction hood. The stripes code D88 was an option on the standard SS hood. There's no such thing as stripe delete. Only in one particular instance, and it's very rare, the code D88, RPO D88, was standard equipment when you opted for the ZL2 cowl induction hood. In the event that you did not want the D88 stripes with the cowl induction, you could have it specially striped delete. And that's the only time striped delete is correct. The rest of the time, stripes is nothing but a, simply an option. A standard domed SS hood and a cowl induction hood. That is the correct terminology for these hoods and these options. This car has the CTX original engine block still in place in the car. It has correct metal inner fenders for an Atlanta built car. You can see the cowl induction switch is mounted in the correct location for an atlanta built assembled car and it looks like the wiring gutter has been moved over from the original assembly spot you see the vacant hole headers have been added to the car which is very common and another master cylinder has been added as well now let's do a quick rundown of the cal tag like we do we can focus here okay 70 for 1970 13637 for two-door hardtop a for the atlanta georgia assembly plant designation 21923 for the body number which is in box eight of the build sheet 770 for saddle bench seat interior b80 b90 for the window trim that we've been over for that Atlanta assembly plant put on the their cow tags 63 for code desert sand exterior paint lower b for black vinyl top 01d for the fourth week of january and these last figures are combinations of box 10 and box 24 on an Atlanta built car which i'll show you shortly the 173 656 and the 800122 I will address here in a second. Now let's go down the passenger side of the car. A little rust down low here, nothing major. Every bit of this car can be used if it were to be restored. Fenders, hood, doors, quarters, floor pans, nothing will have to be cut out, in my opinion, on this car. You can see here, like I told you, remnants of the black vinyl top where it was ripped away. And the interior from the passenger side. See the hearse shifter, of course, and the dash pad, which has been replaced. Now, let's go to the trunk area. Let's have the correct 70 Chevelle D88 
exactly at emblem with the Chevelle is above the by Chevrolet. And let's take off the this here and address the trunk. Nice trunk area. If you'll see the Uniroyal Tiger Paul is correct. These cars came with Uniroyal Tiger Pauls, Firestone White Oval, Goodyear Polyglass, and G General G. On the build sheet, it'll say white letter. And then and it's your guess. Unless you have an original car, you really don't know because generally all assembly plants used most of these manufacturers, but this is an original F7014, an original dark gray, unaltered. And if you look to the left of the stem, it's a 10, that's October 31. This wheel was made October 31st, 1969, Halloween day, AO, which is on the build sheet, which is definitely coincides with a January of 70 car. So those wheels had to make it from Motor Wheel Company to the various assembly plants to go on cars. So this car, this wheel tells you from October the 31st to the fourth week, it took the fourth week of January before it made it to an actual assembly line and a car. You see the dots that we've talked about before on the spatter paint, which is correct, on the Atlanta car and other cars. Very hard to duplicate spatter. Nice trunk area. This car does have some rust, but it is generally intact. Car did not come with positive traction, and there's the remnants of the jacking instructions. There would be a caution positive traction rear axle decal back here as well. Now, let's pull the build sheet out and address some of those features. Okay. All right, if we can focus. You can see standard front horn, floor mats was an option, door edge guards, vinyl top was an option. 331 ratio standard, no positive traction, L34 standard or super sport, M20 standard transmission, UM1 radio AM and tape, so that's an eight track AM only, that's still a stereo, instrument panel gauges, and you can see code N40 for power steering would be in the N section, and there's no N, so this car did not have power steering, so that shows the evidence under the hood is correct, that that has been changed, you see the lower 63 for desert sand and saddle interior. Top, black vinyl, and then you see the special duct hood for cal induction hood in the XXX customer order. So this car was ordered by a customer. This was not a lot car. Really neat build sheet just found before this video. Oh, let's address the features that I said before. You can see in box 24, the 173656, and then over here, the combination of 80 and 0122. And I'll go straight to the cow tag now and show you that. Okay, it's 173, 656, and then the 800122 combination of the two figures for the data. That's how you decode them on an Atlanta car. Really neat car here. I think the seat belts are still original to the car. They are have a dating system as well. If you see there, that is the 45th week of 1969. BK would be October, November-ish. So if you go back the 45th, 46th week of 69, 52 weeks in the year, so seven weeks back, that puts you into November of 69. All of the seat belts are factory still to the car as well. Parked here since 1984, still driven quite regularly. 
The intake has been changed. It has a holly carb. The decals to the air cleaner lid look to be original. But for the most part, this car is totally intact. Engine, trans, rear axle, body, interior, aside from the seats been recovered. But this car is all here. It has the protecto plate as well, which we will look over now. Okay. And of course, they are typed backwards. You can see the T12 for December 17. So the December the 17th for a January of 70 car, that is correct. CTX, 350 horsepower, four speed. P is this for the transmission, zero for 70. M for December, which would be December of 69, not December of 70. And then one, two, the 12th. And you have the VIN at the top. The CCW designates 331 open. And then you have, looks to me like 01 January the 14th. Hard to read, but you would have to have time to get from, from Buffalo, New York, which would be the B that designates the B, Buffalo, New York, that axle to get to Atlanta, Georgia to get in this car. But that is what you call a protecto plate. And these stamps that are on here will be on that rear axle, on that engine, and on that transmission. And that's how you tell if it's original to the car, if it has an authentic stamp. Really nice car here. Not many cars around that are this intact. Even the T3 headlights are still here. A lot of cool determining Super sport standard equipment here. Just the car speaks for itself. Really nice 70 Chevelle. SS 396, 350 horsepower. About 53,000 of these cars, roughly 51. If you take away the L78 options, 2100 of those, 2144. So a little over 50,000 of these are made, but they're very hard to find this day and age. This still this intact i'm proud to have found the build sheet for the owner today and he's tickled as well if you have a 1970 chevelle that you need authenticated you can contact me at p nichols 26 at yahoo or p nichols p nichols 26 at yahoo for my email or you can reach me at patrick glenn nichols muscle car barn finds on facebook and youtube if you have a rare find you need to share, you can contact me as well. Not just about 70 Chevelles. I do have a Patreon account that I have started, or you can just simply PayPal me at pnichols26. No donation is too small. I thank you for watching my videos of this 1970 Chevelle. Really nice survivor. More videos on the way. Thanks.